全球原生豪礁受城市发展及过度捕捞等影响，八成半嘅天然豪礁已经被摧毁，成为全球最濒危嘅海洋栖息地。香港沿岸海域嘅豪礁受到过度捕捞、开采、沿岸发展同污染等嘅影响，喺过去一个世纪急剧下降，导致海洋生态系统健康退化。We've got evidence that oyster reefs a thousand years ago were all throughout Hong Kong and, and the Pearl River Delta. Um, the, the, the estuarine conditions here are just perfect for oyster reefs to develop and grow. But of course, we harvested them um, first for, for the meat of the oyster and then for the shells for the lime, um, to make lime from the shells. Hoziu,亦都为好多物种提供了栖息地和肉苗场所。有见及此,TNC大自然保护协会决定收复Hoziu,为海洋重现生机。Hoziu收复其实在其他国家已经有很多成功的例子,我们团队都参考这些例子,
。咁另外仲有好多額外嘅，例如佢哋會令到啲水更加乾淨啦，變相佢哋嘅溶氧量會高咗啦。咁呢啲全部都係對我哋漁民好有幫助嘅功德嚟嘅。TNC 呢個係最好同埋最切衷嘅方法嚟嘅，始終佢係用翻啲天然嘅嘢嚟對付翻個天然嘅問題。Here in Tello Harbour, like many many places around the world, we are looking at a situation of too much nutrients. Nutrient pollution is a global problem. It's a global problem that's basically bigger than climate change in this nearshore area. I've seen areas of Tolo Harbour that actually have had oxygen crashes and where there have been fish kills. So I think it's really important to get the nutrient levels under control so we don't meet that tipping point where oxygen crashes and fish and the animals start to die. Oyster reefs particularly, because they filter their food out of the water, they are great at cycling nutrients. Once we put too much nutrient into a water body like Tolo Harbour, there aren't that many ways we have available to us to get that nutrient out. And one of the best ways we know of is using these habitats, and particularly oyster reefs. Restoration is an expensive um, endeavour, and so it's important for us to get the methodology right before we go at scale and really invest a lot of funds um, into, into any restoration project. Our first design was only made of recycled shell. We know that recycled shell is really good for both biodiversity and uh, recruiting new oysters, but also really good for mitigating the sedimentation issue because of the structural complexity that shells provide. However, because our first pilot was only made of recycled shell and eventually the reef subsided. So we wanted to start again, limestone as a strong core that would not degrade over time, still keeping that outer layer of, of shell. Today we have come back to the reef that we deployed a year ago to look at how it's been evolving um, and whether or not we've grown some oysters and how the reef is maturing. So we did find um, a lot of oysters and a lot of things living on it, a lot of fish, a lot of crabs. A year later we see a lot of oysters. We also see that there are new babies of this season and past recruitment has also died. But that's normal. Uh, we do expect to see some mortality and also this is a, a challenging system. So the fact that we have some of the oysters that had recruited last year that survived and more babies um, this year round is a very positive sign. What we're doing here is putting an oyster reef into Tolo Harbour as a test site. Um, it's very early, so it's not a mature reef yet, but we're starting to look at what the potential of oyster reef is for processing the nutrients that problem in Tolo Harbour. Now we focus mostly on how they remove nutrients and help water quality, but we also recognize that we love to have them in the ecosystem because it, it creates so much diversity within it. When you look at an oyster reef, it's not just oysters. It's a whole community of animals and sometimes plants that contribute to uh, the whole ecosystem and how it functions. I think everybody expects that when you put a, a restoration site in that you'll have instant results. Um, but it does take several years to reach that sort of the maximum potential of a restoration site. Um, but it's exciting along the way because it means that you get to see as these reefs develop, as the ecosystems grow, uh, you get to look at all the new species which are coming in uh, and, and functioning within that system. Um, we've seen so much good come from the test sites that we've done so far. And if we can expand into the, the historical distribution, the historical range of oyster reefs, then we're going to have such beautiful systems into the future. 投资修复并唔系一朝一日嘅事，除咗我哋要将啲回收蚝壳放落水之后，我哋仲要做一个长期嘅监测，同埋做更加多嘅科研，去了解个蚝礁带俾我哋海洋有几多嘅益处。呢次有赖科研团队，渔民 Alex、豪文阿峰，一众合作餐厅伙伴同埋义工。TNC 希望喺不久嘅将来，可以喺香港不同水域继续重建蚝礁，有朝一日。
，佢哋能够重返香港嘅海域，为全球沿海保育奠下基础。我哋需要你嘅支持